Hi there, it's Jessica Humphreys from Energy Optimal Health. I hope you're having an amazing start to your 2017 and that you've set clear intentions on how you want to feel, what you want to do, how you want to be, and what you want to have for your amazing year. Okay, so we're doing our second episode of Energy TV and we're going to have Bruno coming in talking about the benefits of plant protein and how to use it in an energizing smoothie and I'm going to give you some exercises that you could do to warm up for your favorite winter sports. And stay to the end, we've got a little surprise. We're gonna get you guys to meet our new dog, Nanook. Hey, hello everyone. This is Bruno from uh, Energy Optimal Health. Hope you're doing great. Uh, today I'm gonna share with you uh, the benefits of uh, eating uh, plant protein in your diet. We'll discuss a little bit about uh, different types of uh, plant protein so you can uh, make your way around in your sh next uh, grocery store uh, uh, tour and uh, I'll show you also how to make an energy smoothie healthy one and uh, taking in consideration the right uh, uh, percentage of uh, food groups so it's really nutritious for you. So let's start with uh, the benefits of uh, plant protein uh, versus animal protein. Uh, basically uh, you know we could go on, uh, on for a, a long list of uh, benefits but the main one is how your digestive system will um, uh, use the uh, plant proteins to feed your cells uh, will be done much more efficiently if it's a plant protein versus animal protein. Uh, if you're a human being, if you would be a lion, it would be a different thing because your, your digestive system it works completely different. So uh, it would also, it will also create less inflammation and less acidity. Um, so that's, those are two, the two main advantages of eating plant uh, protein. Okay, some examples, um, almond butter, make sure that uh, if you uh, do uh, uh, pick up uh, almond butter uh, at your grocery store, that it's natural, non, uh, you know, the, the oil floats on the, on the surface of uh, the container. Also, another source of uh, plant protein is uh, beans. All sorts of beans are very good choices. Now we have uh, red kidney beans here, very good choice. Also, avocados are a very good source of um, plant protein, but also healthy fats. Avocado, very good for your skin, among other things. Um, so these are a few uh, examples. Also, nuts uh, such as uh, pecans, cashews, almonds are all very, very good. Okay, we have a handful of uh, nuts right here in our little. Uh, container. Um, so uh, I'll uh, teach you a little uh, recipe of um, an energy healthy smoothie and we'll start with um, approximately a cup of water to make sure that you have a lot of veggies uh, to start up your day or for your meal a handful of baby spinach ideally organic to keep your uh, cells uh, smiley um, I really like to add uh, more veggies, uh, so you could uh, incorporate uh, cucumber, uh, celery, uh, which are, are, have a very light taste, but also sprouts, like uh, this one, this type of uh, sprouts, sunflower sprouts, very good, lots of minerals and uh, chlorophyll, all sorts of good micronutrients. Um, make sure that you put a little sweet touch mangoes, these ones are frozen, a little more liquid, uh, we've uh, put a cup of unsweetened almond milk, again if you can find it organic it's uh, much better for your cells. Um, we would uh, incorporate uh, in our recipe a teaspoon of cacao, again if you can have it uh, organic that would be great, and for antioxidant boost a teaspoon of chia seeds. All right, and we'll finish off with the uh, plant uh, protein. Uh, the one that uh, we really love at home is uh, from our partner, Uzona Health Sciences. Why? Because uh, first of all, they're pharmaceutically uh, produced, so no toxicity. They're very well balanced and low glycemic, so it keeps your energy level stable. So one serving is 18 grams. And the second one, 
And Yuzana, also one thing that I really enjoy about their shakes uh, is that they incorporate um, cocoa, coconut oil in it, which is extremely very good, very good uh, healthy fats. So we'll shake it up for a few minutes. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm, really good. A votre santé. Cheers. Whether you're downhill skiing, snowboarding, telemark skiing, snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, skating, or whatever your favorite winter sports are, it's important to warm up so that you avoid any injuries and your body is also more flexible and it's ready for you to fully enjoy your sport. Okay, so what I usually suggest is to do a five to 10 minute cardio warm up. So if you're skiing or snowboarding, or if you're on a mountain, I make sure that you take an easy run down, really work on your stance and balance. You could do a few hops. You can actually do a run that has a few bumps on it so that you're working a little bit of your legs. So you're getting your cardio up. If you're cross country skiing, snowshoeing or skating, make sure your five first five, 10 minutes are more at a moderate intensity so that you're just building up and you don't want to start full out. Okay, I'm going to show you a few little exercises that you actually can do after you've done a little bit of a warm up or right before you start. So you want to start off with your shoulders. So most of our winter sports involve arms, so with your poles. So it's important to get the shoulders nice and warmed up, taking nice deep breaths. You could do about five to 10 rotations towards the front and then five to 10 rotations towards the back, really concentrating on your breath. Good, you can also do lifting one arm towards the sky and one towards the ground and then switch, making sure that you're lowering your shoulder blades and concentrating on your breath. Again, another five to 10 repetitions. You wanna do some side stretches here. So you're getting your obliques ready. You're getting your arms ready. Also goes a little bit into your lats. So your the backs of your shoulders and into your upper back. So you're really stretching, reaching for the sky. All right, great. Another one is you're gonna do a bit of a rotation. So think about that there's something behind you and you wanna go reach for it and grab it and you're keeping your hips forward. Okay, you're getting a nice stretch here in your lower back. Make sure you're breathing all the way through. You could do this as a family as well. It's kind of fun. All right, two and one. You go into some hip circles. So you're preparing your lower back. Always taking nice deep breaths. Now don't worry, you're not gonna look silly if you do, if you actually start to do a warm up before you do your sports, okay? Usually sometimes when I start doing a warm up, all of a sudden the person beside me will start warming up. Maybe someone over across will start doing a warm up. Okay, people feel that they look silly if they're gonna do this before, but it actually is a really great way to start off. All right, change direction. So make sure you're, you're getting loose in both sides. Always with your feet firmly placed in the ground, taking nice deep breaths. All right, we also wanna do, you can also do a hip hinge. So you wanna hinge at the hip, lengthen from your head all the way to your tailbone and come up to a straight back like this. You could do about five rotations, really lengthening your spine and coming back up. I like to breathe in as I go down, breathe out as I come up. All right, last one. We can go into a few squats. So you wanna have your hip, your feet hip width apart, going down, sitting into the posture. This is a great one for skiing as well. All right, so making sure you're really getting low. I like to almost try to touch my feet or my ankles while sitting into the posture. So I'm getting my upper and lower body involved in the stretch. You could do about five to 10 repetitions. Aim more on the 10 <laughs> to the repetitions too. Okay. We can also do step back lunges. So you step back, drop the knee, lift your arms overhead, reaching for the sky, and then change for your other leg. So you drop your knee, reach for the sky. So you're tilting your pelvis forward to get this nice hip flexor stretch. This is great for cross country skiing, for snowshoeing, where we really use those muscles predominantly. All right, then we can work a little bit in the hip. 
So you can do hip rotations. If you need a little bit more balance, you can hold on to one of your poles. If not, use this as a moment where you can work on your balance. So you can do about five to 10 outwards, then you can go inwards, keeping your balance, engaging your core, breathing, of course, smiling, because, well, you're super excited because I know you're gonna do a great winter sport. All right. And another one, if you just wanna do some abduction, adduction of the leg, so out and in. A lot of people like to hold on to their poles for that one. I like to work my balance. And then switching up to the other leg. Make sure you're breathing all the way through. All right, three, two, and the last one. Excellent, so those are some great ideas for you to warm up for your favorite winter sport so that you avoid any injury, you also increase your mobility, your flexibility, and you have an amazing time for whatever sport you're doing. All right, see you soon.